so good to see everyone this morning. Welcome to Bridgeway. If this is your first time, my name is Brandon. I'm one of the pastors here. We're so delighted that you're here with us, uh, worshiping. If you're joining us online, welcome as well. Would you stand as we sing to our Lord this morning?
Hey, can you hear me? Can y'all hear me? Hey, it works. Ooh, wow. That's loud. Yeah. Good morning. How y'all doing? Welcome to Bridgeway. If you don't know me, I'm, I'm Tommy Webb. I haven't been up here in a little while. We were gone for a couple weeks. And uh, <coughs> um, we went and saw our son Jason in Hawaii and uh, came back to a lot of snow. Uh, it, was, uh, it was interesting. If you are a guest here and you fill out your communication card, if you're online, there will be a digital communication card and you turn it in, we will give $10 to a Child's Hope International and that will help feed a family free for a month or feed a family for a month for free. I said that backwards. What is next? Prayer and communion. We have prayer and communion services this Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. So what we used to do is we used to just you come uh, in between a certain period of time, but now it's an actual service. So it starts at 6.30. We'll sing some hymns, and then uh, we'll have a, a brief message, and then we'll do communion. That is at 6.30. That's this Tuesday evening, uh, February 23rd. And then also this Tuesday after communion, uh, guys, if you can stick around, we have men's Bible study. That starts at 7. I think we're still in the book of James. Uh, so if you guys want to stick around for that, that will be at 7 o'clock. Uh, on your communication card, uh, we need some people to sign up for kids' ministry. If you want to sign up for that, just put your name and your phone number. Put that on your communication card. You tear that off and put it in the offering box in the back. There's one by the new here table also. What is next? Adult snow tubing. That is Saturday, March 6th. And if you want to go snow tubing at Perfect North. Uh, they weren't too busy. We went past there the other day, and it was uh, they were busy, but not crazy busy. Um, but that is March 6th. Men's prayer breakfast that is Saturday, March 6th at 9 a.m. Guys, that's for us. If you guys want to, that's the first Saturday of every month is men's prayer breakfast. So this uh, coming up Saturday, March 6th, we'll do that. And then uh, 21 days of prayer starts March 15th. I don't know any details about that. Do you guys? Brent will give more details about 21 days of prayer starting March 15th. What's next? Starting point. So we have two classes. We got Sunday, March 21st, and the 28th. That's after service. So and correct me if I'm wrong. So this right. If you're new here and you want to learn more about Bridgeway, you want to learn more about uh, becoming saved, you want to learn more about the ministry and, and the faith, uh, then sign up for starting point. It, again, is on your communication card. Uh, also, adult snow tubing's on there. Sign up, put in the offering box. That way we get a number of people who want to come. And then um, uh, that will be on Saturday, March 21st, or Sunday, March 21st, and Sunday, March 28th. Also, something I missed that wasn't on there, if you want to sign up for the maintenance team, that's still on here. Uh, that's for cutting grass, uh, uh, just doing stuff around the, the church building and whatnot. Sign up, put in the offering box, both by the new here table and in the back, and then something else, a couple other things um, that, that weren't on there. Um, Operation Blessing, something that me and Aaron do. We're collecting Bibles, backpacks, and blankets that we hand out to the homeless. We have tons of blankets. We've got tons of Bibles. We just, if you guys could, we need backpacks um, to fill up. And then what we do is we drive around Claremont County, Brown County, and whatnot, and we hand them out um, to any homeless people that we see. So if you guys can hook us up with some backpacks, that'd be awesome. And I do have one prayer request. Um, my mom just found out yesterday that she has a spot on her leg. They're trying to find out if it's bone cancer or not. Uh, if you guys can pray for her, we'll find out tomorrow if it is cancer. Um, so, and that's all that I have. So if you guys can bow your heads, we'll go to prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for, uh, thank you for this day. Thank you for just this uh, beautiful day. Thank you for being here with us as we all woke up and we all were able to experience your sunshine and experience uh, just a beautiful morning this morning. Lord, thank you for bringing us here safely so we can gather together and, and worship together and, and, and hear a message from, from Pastor Brent and be able to worship with Pastor Brandon and just be together to, to, to fellowship together. Lord, we pray that you continue to watch over us and continue to be with us. We pray that you guide and direct us in all, all that you say and do, Lord. Uh, pray that you be a little mom, Lord. Pray that you watch over her and uh, just wrap your arms around her as she goes through the, the questions of not knowing. Uh, pray to be with 
Pastor Brent as he gives us his message today. Lord, pray all these things in your son's name. Amen. Would you stand as we sing that word?
Kids, you can be dismissed. There you go. Well, good morning. It's good to see everyone. Thanks for being with us, whether in person or watching online. A couple things again, parents, remember to take your make it stick paper when you pick your kids up. Reviews their lesson from today. Just want to encourage you to do that. Uh, before we get started, we're continuing our series on prayer, and I want to go to prayer over a couple things. Um, Kaylin Cole uh, lost a dear friend of hers uh, unexpectedly uh, last week, and then 
Jennifer Ammerman, who uh, Jen usually sits right up here up front with her family. Her uh, niece was killed in a car accident on 32. Uh, I think she was only 20 years old, so it's very, uh, very heavy season for these families. So we want to go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll dive into his word today. Father, we think of the difficulties that this life often has, and uh, some more severe than others. And it's always difficult to hear when someone so young, both of these uh, young ladies uh, passing away at an early age, it leaves us with questions, wanting understanding that we may or may not get. But you also leave us with peace and comfort and care in these difficult seasons of life. As I've said many times, Lord, you walk with us through the valley of the shadow of death. Difficult and terrible things that we experience. I lift up the Cole family, specifically Kaylin today. I lift up Jen and the Ammerman family as their hearts are heavy with unimaginable grief. I pray they'd know your comfort during this time. I pray this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. Well, we have uh, talked about different types of prayer the past couple, uh, well, last, last week we started, we talked about a prayer of adoration, where we simply take time to adore God. Prayers of meditation, where we're silent and we reflect. Prayers of thanksgiving and uh, prayers of confession. We talked about the difference between uh, judicial and relational confession of sin, or forgiveness of sin, rather, and why we need to continue, even though we are forgiven of all of our sin, as Christians, we still ask forgiveness for it. If you missed last week, you can check out that sermon on our website, bridgewithamelia.church. And so today we're going to cover a few more, and then next Sunday, Pastor Brandon is going to be uh, preaching on hindrances to prayer. So looking forward uh, to hearing him speak on that. We'll start with uh, something that I didn't grow up being taught. Uh, I don't know exactly why, but it's something that maybe might be new to you, might not be new to you. And it is praying scripture back to the Lord or praying the word, which is where we, we take a passage of scripture and in a spirit of prayer, um, we let those verses inspire our communication and our thoughts uh, to the Lord. You see this in the Old Testament several times, and you see it in the New Testament, people praying the word back to the Lord. Now, a couple tidbits of information when you do this is uh, I would first encourage you to recognize the context of the scripture that you're praying. So you might read the chapter before and the chapter after, and of course the chapter that you're in, uh, because context matters, because maybe what you're praying uh, might not apply to you, because the, the Bible is equally important to all of us, but it's not all applicable uh, to us as, as Christians, like Levitical law and those types of things. Um, so context matters. As the apologist Greg Kokel says, never read a Bible verse, and what he means by that is you just don't take a Bible verse out and and grab its meaning just from that. You have to consider the entire context. It doesn't mean you can't quote a, a verse or even post a verse. He's just encouraging us to always consider the context of where the Scripture is found. And so if you're going to be praying Scripture, recognize the context, and then select uh, passages that are applicable. And we'll start today giving you an example of taking a passage, and some parts of this passage uh, apply to can apply to you, and, and some of it can't. First Chronicles 17, and the setting here is King David is giving a prayer of thanksgiving unto God. And, of course, he's going to talk about Israel. He's going to talk about <clears throat> himself. And uh, I'm not a king, and I'm not a, a Jew. And so can parts of this passage apply to me? Absolutely. Because I, I pray with thanksgiving. I hope you do, too. And um, we'll start here in verse 16. He says, Who am I, Lord God, and what is my house that you have brought me this far? I, th this verse came to my mind. I think it was in a, a, 
in one of my meditation moments, I was walking down my driveway, and uh, I was looking for some birds, and, <laughs> and the kids were sledding. And uh, I'm walking back to the hill where we sled at my house, and uh, this verse just came to me. It was just this overwhelming feeling of gratitude to the Lord of, who, who am I, God, that you would bring me to where I'm at today? I'm just Brent Cunningham. Who am I that here I am and you've brought me this far? Now, in David's life, of course, this, he, he had quite a bit of uh, uh, different twists and turns in his life, but I can kind of think of, of David when he's talking about this. You know, who am I, God? And then he goes on in verse 20. So you can pray verse 16 to the Lord. Lord, who, who, who am I that you would bless me like this? Uh, verse 20, Lord, there is no one like you, and there is no God besides you, as all we have heard confirmed. So I just... These scriptures popped in my mind. I'm seeing my kids sled down the hill with uh, their friends and their cousins and um, just reflecting upon God's goodness in my life. And the scripture just came to me. And pray that back to God. This is another important reason why it's, it's good to memorize some scripture. The Bible says in Psalm 119, 11, Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. So if scripture memory is not something that you've done in a while, I want to encourage, let me just, let's just make it simple. So we're in February, soon to be March. Just try to memorize one verse a month. You'll have some more verses under your belt than you did before the year started. And those scriptures will come to mind at different points in your life. So sometimes I'm looking at a passage and parts of it can apply to me and parts of it can't. One of the most obvious ways to pray scripture is to just pray the prayers that are in the Bible. Now, the Psalms have a ton of prayers in them, and maybe that's a great way to start. Uh, it might seem kind of awkward praying something that is written down. Growing up, uh, I never did that. It wasn't something we did in our circle. Uh, you know, it was... Praying a prayer that someone has written or praying a prayer in the Bible, it, I don't know, maybe it just seemed weird, but there was always kind of this cloud of you don't want to be praying in vain repetition. And I think that was the fear. We would just be praying uh, these words and we wouldn't mean it. I don't know exactly, but it was always this uh, trying to be cautious um, because maybe we thought our prayers needed to be impromptu for some reason. But you can pray things that are written down, Scripture or, or prayers that other people have, have written. It's only vain if you're, you're doing it for a vain reason. You remember the Pharisees, they, they were praying so that they could be heard by everybody. Or they thought that they would be heard because of their, how many words they were saying. And if you remember... Uh, the one man, the, the, the repentant sinner who, who God did hear, he wouldn't lift his eyes up to heaven. He just kept saying to the Lord, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And the Pharisee over here thinking he was better than everybody else because he could pray really, really good, apparently. But that's, again, that would be vain repetition. Uh, praying scripture, uh, I think, doesn't necessarily fall into that category unless you do it for vain reasons. In, in Acts chapter 4, you see the church praying a passage of Scripture. This is after Peter and John are threatened, and they're released, and they come back to tell the church what happened because the authorities are like, you need to shut up about Jesus, and they're like, no, not going to happen. And so they come back to the church, and they tell the church what's going on, which, again, the early church devoted themselves to prayer individually and corporately. That's why Tuesday, our communion time, you need to be here. It's a corporate time of prayer. It is set aside. There's a reason we don't do it on Sunday mornings anymore. I felt convicted in my heart to set this time aside. Not that doing it on Sunday mornings is wrong, but uh, I felt uh, as the pastor of this church that, that maybe we just need to set this aside and treat this uh, a little more sacred maybe than what we were. And so Tuesday at 6.30, it's a half hour. Tommy's going to share a devotion. We're going to pray, and we're going to partake in communion. That's it. Um, so I want to encourage you to be here for that. 
The early church gathers in Acts 4. It says when they heard this, they heard Peter and John's story, they raised their voices together to God and said, Master, you are the one who made heaven and earth and the sea and everything in them. You said through the Holy Spirit by the mouth of our father uh, David, your servant, why do the Gentiles rage and the people plot futile things? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers assemble together against the Lord and his Messiah. And they're quoting from the Psalms. They're simply praying a prayer that they knew. Even Jesus prayed the Psalms when he is dying on the cross, when he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Uh, that is from the 22nd Psalm. And so we, we see many times, and there are plenty more examples, but we don't have time for all of them, where believers are praying Scripture. It's there. It's inspired on their heart to pray it. And so I want to encourage you to try that. Now, there's a couple other uh, tidbits of information I want to give you when it comes to praying Scripture. Um, maybe you can be begin your prayer with a passage. I mean, the whole prayer doesn't have to be a, a passage of Scripture, but for example, Psalm 119 says this, <clears throat> Open my eyes so that I may contemplate wondrous things from your instruction. It'd be a great way to start your prayer. God, here I am. Open my eyes to some wondrous things that are about you, that are about this life, that you want me to accomplish. You can fill in the blank however you want. Because maybe sometimes you don't know what to pray. And if you don't know what to pray, then I would encourage you to pray Scripture. Um, so maybe start your, your, your prayer with that. Maybe allow a passage to shape that prayer. For example, in Psalm 24, The earth and everything in it, the world and its inhabitants, belong to the Lord. And my prayer in thinking about this is, God, everything's yours including Amelia, Ohio, including the counties that are around us, and help us, God, to reach those that are in our own backyard. Help them to know the depth of the love that you have for them. Or maybe you can allow some imagery in Scripture to influence how you pray. I like to use my imagination. I love it. Uh, I still play Barbies with my daughter all the time. Uh, I use G.I. Joe's, just so you know. Um, and because uh, I had a huge imagination when I was a kid, so I had my G.I. Joe's and I would take them to school, and then we'd be outside and they'd fight wars and save the world. Anybody else do that? Okay, there are a few of us that were willing to raise our hands. But man, my imagination was massive. And uh, so when I read a passage of scripture and it gives this image, like, for me, in my head, it just starts exploding with what's going on. For example, in Revelation 7, it talks about how uh, all peoples, all nations, people of all nations and languages will be around the throne of God, worshiping God. You can, you can just sit in a prayer of silence and just think about that thought for a while. Like, that will be a reality one day. This isn't, my imagination includes a lot of fairy tales, but in this imagination... It's going to be a reality one day where people from all nations will gather and worship God around the throne. Like, this is real stuff that we're going to experience. That's pretty cool. Or you just take time to think about heaven or the fact that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I think about that. Kind of let myself get swept away in some of those things. And so if a scripture, if there's some imagery in scripture that prompts you, maybe just meditate on it and just think about it and imagine for a little bit. Maybe you take a passage of scripture and you declare it as a truth for people around you. For example, Romans 10, 13 says, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's true. Now, we know in the, in the context of talking about repentance and faith, and my prayer is for, obviously for everyone, but you know, if I'm being specific, I start with this little hub that we have here in southwest Ohio slash northern Kentucky. We had a visitor from Indiana last week, so I got to include all, all the tri-state area 
We have this little tri-state area, and it's like, Lord, I want these people to call on your name. I want them to be saved. I want them to come to know you as Lord and Savior of your life. I mean, are you praying for the salvation of our community, of our world? So I, I claim this. Okay, God, they call on your name. They repent and believe, and then they're saved. And I believe that, and I'm hoping and praying for that to be a reality in the community around us. So if you've not done it before, take some time this week. Maybe start in the Psalms and find some prayers and pray them back to God. Might even seem kind of weird at first. It was weird for me at first. I felt kind of uncomfortable just because of my mindset. But it's amazing, and I would encourage you to try it. Next we'll dive into is, uh, the next two are, are kind of the obvious ones when we come to types of prayer. Intercessory prayer and petition. So intercessory prayer, which again, prayer is just simply talking to God. Intercessory prayer is talking to God on behalf of other people. Ephesians 6 says this, Pray at all times in the Spirit with every prayer and request, and stay alert with all perseverance and intercession for all the saints. Now, in the Old Testament, you had uh, prophets who were uh, ones who could do intercessory prayer on behalf of other people, Abraham and Moses, Samuel and Hezekiah, and other great men of God and women of God. <clears throat> Christ, of course, is our ultimate intercessor. But as Christians, we believe in what's called the royal priesthood of the believer, that we have access to God at any point in time. So we can go before him and intercede on other people. We can pray for folks to be healed physically, spiritually, emotionally. We can pray for uh, conviction, you know, for those we're trying to reach with the God. We can, we can intercede on behalf of other people. And I, I've, uh, I remember a guy uh, one time coming to a pastor friend of mine and saying, hey, I need you to pray for me because I know me and God, we're not, we're not there. And uh, this guy had you know, some, some issues with the Lord, but he knew that this pastor believed it, and so he was asking for, for prayer uh, from the pastor. So you might have people in your life who don't believe in God or are angry at God, but they know that you know who God is, and they know that you believe with everything that's in you who he is. And they might come to you and ask for you to pray. On their behalf, we need to pray for those in authority over us. Uh, 1 Timothy 2 says this first of all, then I urge that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those who are in authority, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. This is good and it pleases God our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. This means you pray for the president, even if you didn't vote for him or if you did vote for him. It goes the same for Trump as it did for, for President Biden. You pray for those who are in authority over you. Well, Brent, I don't like them. Let's not make this a red-blue issue. Let's make it a Jesus issue. We're commanded by God to pray for those in authority over us. We may not approve what they do, but I'm commanded to pray for them. And maybe if we spent more time praying for them than we do complaining about them, I don't know, maybe some things might change. I'm not saying don't have a political opinion. But I'm saying let's pray more than we give our opinion on politics. Because think about the environment in which Paul is asking Timothy to pray. If you want to talk about people in authority who are really screwing you over, Look at, at, at the situation Paul and Timothy find themselves in. I mean, the, Paul gets arrested. Ultimately, he's killed for his faith. This is an incredibly risky, uh, it's incredibly risky to be a Christian uh, during that time. Not only do you have in a social setting uh, the Jews who are completely against what you're doing, you also have Roman authorities who are trying to squash this, and eventually, it doesn't take long, you have Nero He's burning Christians and lighting the streets with their bodies. And Paul's like, hey, pray for those in authority over you. 
It's not an easy thought. But we're commanded to do it. Jesus said, I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. That can be a tough pill to swallow. This is why some folks didn't think Jesus was the Messiah, because they thought Messiah's coming, he's going to kick the Romans out, kill them, and we're, we're going to set up this kingdom. And Jesus is like, no, I want you to love the Romans. And I want you to pray for them. And it just went contrary to the belief of so many people. It's a hard thing. But we're to intercede and pray for those in authority over us and pray for our enemies. And then just to pray for people we don't even know. And we're going to try this as a church. We're going to try something that's a little ambitious. And it's going to take us a long time to accomplish it. But we're going to try. We're going to try what's called pray and go. If you could bring the slides up for me, please, there, Joe. So go to the next one. Uh, pray and go, uh, we've got, it basically, it's something we used to do, but on a much smaller scale, where we would have a prayer walk. Uh, this isn't like door knocking where you're knocking on their door and, uh, you know, talking to people on, on a regular basis, face to face. It's much different than that. Uh, basically, the streets around us, in fact, we have a map of, uh, go to the next slide, please. And this map will be in our hallway. We have a map of a five-mile radius around Bridgeway. Within that five miles, there are 100,000 people just in our own back door. Isn't that crazy? And we're going to pray over every single street inside that circle, every single house, every single apartment building. Basically, we're going to walk, and uh, as we, we view a house, and I'll break this down when we have our first actual big push for this, but we're going to pray for that family uh, in some way, shape, or form, however God lays on our heart, and we'll have a door hanger, and the door hanger simply says, we prayed for your family. If you need anything, let us know. It's basic. It's simple. You get exercise, right? Everybody likes that. But more importantly, we're letting our community know that we're lifting them up to God. Whether they believe it or not, we do. And there are many churches that are having some, some great responses from this. Because again, remember, in the craziness that is uh, this time uh, I'd say 2020, but it's 2021, but the craziness of this time period, people are asking some, some big questions. And um, this might prompt some really good conversations. Now, this might take us five years. It might take us 10 years. I honestly have no idea how long this is going to take. But it's one thing we can do to get outside the walls of this church that's COVID-proof, right? You're not, you're not going in anybody's house, if someone does want to talk to you, you can talk to them outside, six feet apart. But it's something, it's not like we can pull off our block parties right now, which we love doing, or our movie nights in the summer. It's not like we're pulling those off, but it's going to allow us to get side out, out of the walls of this church, right, and be active. And everybody can do it. In fact, I want to encourage you when we do this, uh, you don't have to do it on the set days we set aside. You can do it at any time. We'll have a station set up where you can just take door hangers whenever you want and uh, take care of your own neighborhood first, right? If anybody should be praying over your subdivision, it should be you, your neighbors. Now, maybe you don't live in a subdivision. You live on a very long road. Well, we're going to get all those folks too. It's, if there's not a sidewalk, we're going to walk anyway, right? So I'll be talking more about that in the future, but I just thought, man, we could intercede on behalf of 100 thousand people that are in our own backyard. I mean, this is, this is our Judea, right? It's right here, our Jerusalem, right in our backyard. And so uh, we're going to give that a shot. And so we'll have this map. I've already got it. It'll be in the hallway. And when you finish a street, you just mark it off. And so hopefully we'll get all those streets marked off eventually. No, actually we will. It's not a hopeful thing. We're going to get all of them. Even if it's like on our 20th anniversary or whatever, Every single one's getting marked, church. But it's going to take all of us to do it. I'm going to pray for our community because not only do we love them, we know that God loves them more than us. We want to communicate that to them and intercede. Let me ask you this, uh, kind of shifting gears just a little bit. 
Have you ever had someone pray for you and you knew it? It feels good. It really does. I get a text. I get usually two text messages every Sunday morning from two pastors. And usually it's just a passage of scripture. We'll text you. We try to beat each other, like, hey, I prayed for you first kind of thing. Um, but just saying, hey, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for Bridgeway. May God be exalted in what we do today. One of the most encouraging things is when someone says, I have been praying for you. Now, you might be praying for someone and they don't know it. And that's fine, but I want to encourage you, if you've been praying for someone consistently and you haven't told them yet, please tell them. Because it does wonders for them. It will do wonders for you as well. All right, let's move into this final uh, type of prayer. Uh, We've talked about praying scripture, which I encourage you to do. We've talked about intercessory prayer, praying on behalf of someone else. Let's talk about prayers of petition. Let's go to the model prayer in Matthew 6. Therefore, you should pray. The the disciples are asking how to pray. Therefore, you should pray like this. Our Father in heaven, your name be honored as holy. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. A prayer of petition is a prayer of requests on your behalf. We kind of talked about this when we talked about prayer of confession. But this can can talk about our daily bread, knowing that God is the one who sustains us physically, spiritually, in all aspects of life. He is the sustainer. Uh, And I think also praying this daily bread, what it does for us is it, it, it helps us to humbly acknowledge that without God, we can do nothing. And Jesus even goes so far to say that. He said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. And he just keeps going. He says, without me, you can do nothing. You take the branch off the vine, you can't do anything. And so this prayer for our daily bread, I think, is a daily reminder that everything we have, and I talked about this last week, comes from God. And this really keeps us from developing a prideful and arrogant attitude of look at me and look what I've done. It's more of, Who am I, Lord, that you've brought me this far? I need my daily bread. I need you to to keep me, to sustain me. This is the only day that we've got right now. And by God's grace, maybe he'll give us one tomorrow. It's not guaranteed. We all know this. We all know that tomorrow is not guaranteed. Maybe it's even cliche. But if you looked at this day as a gift from God, and that he gives you the daily things that you need. It helps you go through your day with a level of appreciation and affects how you communicate not only to God but to other people. And so different aspects of this prayer, of course, talk about adoration, God's name being holy. But I want to focus in uh, more on the petition aspect of it. So he's asking for daily bread. He's asking for forgiveness. Um, all those things we desperately need from, from the Lord. Shortly after Jesus says this, he gets into instructing his followers basically how, the, how to deal with their anxiety. He teaches them how to pray, and then he says, Therefore I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you'll eat, what you'll drink, about your body, what you'll wear. Isn't the life more than food and the body more than clothing? Skip down, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow. So he just told them to pray about their daily bread. He says, don't worry, because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. He says, again, I take care of birds. I take care of you. Don't worry about what you'll eat or drink or wear. I will take care of you. So when we're praying our daily bread, I'm coming in from an aspect of trusting that God is going to take care of me in the way that he sees fit. Another aspect of this is... uh, on the surface, it can seem kind of strange. So we're praying for daily bread, we're praying for forgiveness, and then we're praying, don't bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. That one kind of seems weird, like it's just thrown in there, but let's unpack it for a second. The first question we ask is, okay, so if I'm praying for God not to bring me into to, 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 uh, temptation, to lead me into temptation, um, does he do that then? 
does, first let's ask the question, does God tempt us? The answer to that is no. James 1, no one undergoing a trial should say, I am being tempted by God, since God is not tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. So what's going on here then? Again, this, th that passage in Matthew 6 is not saying God directly tempts us in any way, shape, or form. Is it possible for God to lead us into places where there's going to be trial, where there's going to be temptation? Absolutely. Keep in mind, if we're considering the context of all of this, if you back up two chapters in Matthew what happens to Jesus? Matthew 6, he's saying, okay, when you pray, pray don't lead us into temptation. Um, if you back up two chapters, what's happening to Jesus? Matthew 4, verse 1. Then Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. The temptation of Christ is just two chapters before this. And he's led by the Spirit, which is also God. And this is an example for us. There are times where God is going to allow us to go to different avenues, different difficulties, different temptations, different trials. Remember, the shepherd is the one who's leading us through the valley of the shadow of death. We're going to have to go through some of these difficult things. But the question really is, is it wrong for us to ask God not to go that direction that day? No, it's not wrong for us to ask that at all. And said, so Jesus is like, you can pray that. You can pray, Lord, I'd rather not deal with whatever trial is ahead of me. And it's okay to ask that. Don't lead me this way today. And God might very well say, you know what, okay. We're not going that way. Why would God lead us that way? Why would he lead us, uh, James 1, when it comes to our trials? He says, Consider it a great joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you experience various trials, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. So the times God allows us into these temptations and these trials, there is opportunity for growth and maturation in our faith. Furthermore, God provides a way of escape with each temptation that comes our way. 1 Corinthians 10, No temptation has come upon you except what is common to humanity. But God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to bear it. He gives us the grace in order to endure whatever is ahead of us. So if we have to walk through that trial, if God leads us to that temptation, he gives us grace to handle it. He gives us opportunity to grow. He's not a helicopter parent. He's not going to wrap you in bubble wrap. He's going to allow you to walk through this life and face some hardship. And he's going to be with you every single step of the way. But Jesus is also telling us it's okay to ask God not to go through that today. It's okay to ask that. Ultimately, what we're praying for is God's will. Thy kingdom come, thy what will be done. So I might go through that today, and maybe God, instead, we go a different direction. I'm going to follow his lead. If you remember Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, he's praying this cup to be passed from him. But what does he ultimately end with? Not my will, but your will. Jesus is asking for the cup to be passed, knowing the, the horror of what's coming his way. He says, you know, if there's another way, but not my will, let your will be accomplished. So when it comes to our petition, yes, we're praying for our needs to be met. We're also praying, God, I, there's some ways I don't want to go, some directions I don't want to go today. He might say yes, and he might say I got your back. Let's do this. You're good. We're going to walk through it. We're going to go. It's not going to be easy, but we're going to do it. And I'm going to be here with you. You ever walk with your kid when they're trying something new and they're freaked out? Like right beside them? For us, it's often roller coasters. 
you know, there's a new roller coaster, and we're going to try it. And uh, for Rhett, once he does it the first time, he's set. But sometimes get him to that first time, he can be a little bit nervous sometimes. It's like, dude, I got you. I'll be sitting right next to you. It's all good. And so I can pray, Lord, I don't want to face this trial today. And he might say yes. Or he might say, hold on. Here we go. We're going through this. Prayers of adoration, prayers of meditation, thanksgiving, confession, praying scripture, intercession, and petition. I hope these types of prayer will help you in your prayer life. Help it develop deeper and stronger. One thing we're going to do, and we're going to pray here in just a minute. Again, Pastor Brandon speaking next Sunday on the hindrances of prayer. And then Pastor David's going to speak of the impact of prayer in his life as he reflects on, you know, years of ministry and, and uh, whatnot. But uh, we're going to do this uh, 21 days of prayer starting on Monday, March 15th. Uh, so that would start on Monday, March 15th, and our 21st day would be Easter Sunday. And I want to use this, these three, three weeks as a kind of a time of consecration, also a time of fasting. Uh, so I'll be preaching on that uh, on the 14th uh, about fasting. We're covering prayer in depth right now. But um, maybe there's some things that you need to fast from. It can be food, but it can also be other things, social media. You fill in the blanks. We'll have prayer guides for everyone. You can also download the prayer guides because I'll only have so many that are physical booklets. But if you're, if you're, if you're fasting from social media, us posting the daily prayer isn't going to help you. So we'll have guides for everyone. And I want to encourage our entire faith family to have a 21-day period of prayer and if you choose fasting, which will end on, on Easter. And we'll just see what God does with us and how he grows us and changes us through that. So let's, uh, let's bow together. And maybe you want to take some time to have a prayer of adoration, or you want to meditate, or you want to do all that at once. That's fine, too. You can adore him. You can stop and be silent. Or you, maybe it's time of confession for you or giving thanks there are certainly people we need to intercede for. Uh, we men I mentioned the Cole family and the Ammerman family. We want to intercede on their behalf and lift them up to the Lord. Maybe there's a petition you need to make to the Lord today. You know what, what you need to say. So take this time to do that. Lord God, I thank you for this faith family. I thank you for our time that we get every week to meet, to talk about you and talk about your word. I pray that we would make more of an effort to hide your word in our heart, Lord, that we may not sin against you, that we can have these constant reminders of your guidance. Father, I pray for those who find it difficult to pray. It's a hard thing for them. God, I pray that some barriers can be broken, some walls can be taken down. Maybe this time they just need to be praying scripture back to you and allowing you to shape and mold them. Or maybe some prayers this morning are, Lord, don't lead me in, into temptation. Lord, I don't want to go down that road today. You told us it's okay to ask that. We know you'll be with us even if we have to go through that trial. But you said it's okay to ask that. Lord, I pray for the 100,000 people that are within five miles of where this faith family gathers every Sunday. You care and love all 100,000 of them, most of which don't know you, God. We pray for the salvation of folks in our own backyard as well as those all over the world. I pray for us as a church to mobilize and let the community know that we are here and that you love them 
and that we love them. Help us, God, to develop and grow in our time of prayer with you. We pray this in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. Let's stand together and we'll sing before we're dismissed today. Thank you.